Today, we're taking an old classic from one of my favorite uh, video game publishers, LJN. What if Beetlejuice was a movie? Hello everyone, welcome back to Screen to Screen. I'm Andrew and this is Chris. Why, hello there! The name of the game is Beetlejuice. The main character's name is Beetlejuice, if I remember correctly. At first, I'm thinking this guy's an alien, because in a game like Beetlejuice, you're, you're probably from... Oh yeah, from the planet Beetlejuice. Maybe they call him Beetlejuice. You know, sometimes when someone's from another place, you call them by that name, like, a hey, Tex, you know? Honestly, he probably had a name that's impronounceable for us. That, that <laughs> impronounceable. Makes, that unpronounceable. Sense. But then you, you realize that this game is literally about a guy stomping on beetles to presumably harvest their juice. He makes juice from beetles, he trades that into a weird salesman, and he uses those things to transform himself and give him superpowers. Like, it lets him turn into, like, a snake man, an ogre man, a two-faced man, a... And that would make sense, you know? Our, our beetles would be a precious commodity. Their juice is for us. We can get that all the time. Walk outside, free beetle juice. But for someone from an alien planet, like, that's a delicacy. Through playing the game, there's a lot of references to, like, the afterlife, so he's probably, like, a demon or ghost, perhaps. Maybe he really is, like, the ghost of an alien. He finds things for people. He's, like, a... You know, he's finding little items around the house, like, uh, yeah, glasses yeah, yeah. or... He helps someone find his glasses, uh, a wedding ring for someone he finds. Although that's a little bit personal for him. It seems like there might be a love line in this game. In between levels, there's just, like, one shot of, like, a car that fell into a river. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea what that's about. It's never explained. Never addressed, yeah. Maybe that's how he died. Maybe, like, he died went to hell and this is his redemption story and he's doing good deeds by helping these people out. Oh, okay, sort of like getting his wings in a way. He's trying to like finish up his unfinished business i.e. he's in love with this character he he can't be with her obviously because he's dead, but at the very least he can give her the wedding ring he was holding on for her. Maybe he died on the way to the house to like propose and like that's his last thing. So there's uh, definitely one thing that we have to include. It's like the door that follows you all the time. Just literally a door and the door dumps him into some sort of horrible hellscape with a giant worm that tries to eat him. It looks a bit like a Roadrunner cartoon where he ends up, but in space, though. It's clearly not the afterlife, because we go to the afterlife when we win. That has to be Beetlejuice. It's like it's like he's being pulled back to where he belongs, but he, he doesn't want that. He feels like he belongs here, so he wants to go to our afterlife and not Beetlejuice's afterlife. Beetlejuice comes to Earth. Uh, he shows up to Earth all, all set to sort of, like, take over. Uh, he spends one day at Earth, he sees all the great people here, and he's like, you know what? I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to take over Earth. I want to live among these people. And as he's having this thought, he drives his car into the river and dies. Ah, yeah, I like it. And so now he's kind of stranded on Earth as a ghost. But his home planet's afterlife is beckoning him back. But he's like, no, I want to stay in Earth's afterlife. And then, and then it turns out that Earth uh, afterlife is is a fifties diner. In which case, David Lynch can can guest direct that part of the movie. Yeah, the the weird boss fight, what appears to be the Grim Reaper. I like the idea of him having to literally defeat the like earthly yeah. representative of the afterlife and prevent himself from being sent to a different afterlife. He dies. The Grim Reaper shows up and he's like, "You're not on this list. You could come to Earth afterlife, but you'd have to do so many good deeds. Good luck, you know, getting them done in." time. Time. If we had to kind of cast this movie, what would you think? Well, obviously Beetlejuice. We have to cast Beetlejuice, him. Yeah. I'm leaning Jeffrey Coombs for him. There's a lot of like weird alien characters, which is nice. Like the shopkeeper. Steve Buscemi. Hello there, fellow alien. <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, What was the name of the love interest in this? Liv? It might have been something like Liv. Yeah, that would make sense because he wants to live. Yeah. Oh, that oh, it rhymes. So who could play her? Who's the lady from um, Russian Doll? Oh yeah. Maybe she could be Liv. Hey, hey, Beetlejuice. What are you doing? Hello there. What is it? What is this? Is an alien? Is he? Is he a ghost? I, I don't understand this guy. Hey, he wants to marry me, but uh, why? I, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna be married to a, to a ghost. What is this? Doesn't even work. Well, thanks for watching Screen to Screen. We hope you enjoyed Beetlejuice as a movie. I know I did. <laughs> God damn it. Beetlejuice is a movie. Wait, what? Yeah, it says so right here on the internet. Oh, I didn't bother Googling any of this. I just assumed it was a video game without any kind of time. Oh, wait, no, it's a TV show. Oh, thank God.